time to make some moonshine. It's time to make some moonshine. moonshine. Hello and welcome back to the channel. It is 2021. My name is Beaver and we are making moonshine. Now, depending on where you're from in the world, moonshine has a different definition. Now, the three things that I came across while doing my research on the whole subject of moonshine is number one, it needs to be distilled illegally. Number two, it needs to be destined for sale. And number three, it needs to have a high corn and sugar content. On two of those fronts, we are not hitting the mark. Number one, South Africa, it is legal to distill the product and I'm using it for own consumption and not selling it. So yeah, all that's left over is the recipe. Now I did a lot of research and uh, a couple of deep dives onto YouTube to find a moonshine recipe. Now there's a lot of complicated ones out there and there's quite easy ones. And I chose one of the easier ones to do that is sworn by to be a very good recipe. Now, before we get into the recipe, I just need to clarify one thing, and that is the use of the grain in this recipe. When you use grain while making a spirit, you can use it for two reasons. Reason number one is you can use it as your source of sugar. For that, you need to mash in, you need to hit it at a specific temperature, uh, get the alpha and the beta amylase activated to turn the starches into sugar and then you can ferment and distill. If you want to learn more about that kind of process, I have done a couple of all grain videos that I'll link up here for you to go check out on how to do an all grain mash. Number two, the second use for grain within a recipe is purely as a flavor or a flavor adder. If you take a recipe like a UJSSM where you use crushed corn and you add your water and your sugar to it and the corn flavors the mash and then you use the back set to create your product, you never use the starches in the corn as a source of sugar. You only use it as a flavor agent. Now the recipe we're going to be doing for this corn moonshine mash is a non-conversion method so we're not going to boil anything we're not going to cook anything we are just going to follow the recipe as it's intended now the recipe i got was calculated in gallons now in south africa we use liters so one gallon equals roughly 3.8 liters and uh, as well as pounds so we're going to be using one pound of sugar or equal to 454 grams of sugar per 3.8 liters, as well as a quarter pound of coarse ground cornmeal. Now, quarter pound of coarse ground cornmeal is roughly 113 grams in uh, the metric system. So yeah, the actual recipe that I converted up to 20 liters that we will be making today will be down in the description box. If you're not aware what cornmeal is in South Africa, we call it millipop and I went for the coarse ground version, which is referred to as braai pup. So the braai pup is more coarsely ground than or milled than uh, your standard pup that you'll buy in store. And it just makes it a lot easier once you want to filter the stuff out and you stir it, which you will see a bit later on. We will also be using some super high brew yeast or high foam super brew yeast this stuff likes uh, sugar and that maize combination, so uh, we'll be using that as well. Now, let's get into the recipe. First up, let's start by rehydrating our yeast and getting it nice and active during the time we wait for uh, everything to start happening. So to rehydrate your yeast or to get your yeast nice and active, a few tablespoons of uh, sugar. Add your yeast packet in. We're going to top it up with some water. Now this is nice borehole water and that's one of the other things that the recipe called for was good quality water. Now this comes out roughly about 60 meters underneath the earth so nice and clean. 
while the yeast is rehydrating let's get the rest of the recipe together now what i did just before we start recording the videos i added a couple of liters around about 15 liters of water into my still just to cover my element and got that up to a boil now it's currently still boiling in the background here i would suggest roughly like five liters of water should be sufficient to get this all started and get everything mixed up so nice and hot about five liters of water we're going to add to the bucket first up a nice clean bucket bucket wash pre-washed with uh, some bleach water and also sprayed down with some no rinse sanitizer i know when the moonshiners do it in the back sticks of Appalachia that uh, they do not use uh, sanitizer but for our purposes rather safe than sorry so remember always use your nice and sanitized equipment so first up for the recipe what we need is currently we have 420 liters 588 grams of coarse ground white maize or white cornmeal or rye pot 2.4 kilograms of sugar now i went for a standard brown sugar what you need to look for number one is when you're buying your sugar is pure cane sugar also look on the back of the ingredients list the only ingredient that should be listed on the background there or on the back of the ingredients is pure cane sugar nothing else nothing more you don't want any additives or caramel flavors or anything like that just pure cane sugar just give everything a nice quick mix with your hand just to make sure that the, when you add the water the maize meal or fry pup or corn meal or whatever you want to call it does not get all clumped and stick together now for the water like i said it's just normal boiling water not at any specific temperature but i know someone's going to ask so let's just quickly take a measurement of the temperature to uh, set everybody's minds at ease remember there's no specific temperature get your water to a rolling boil and then you're going to add it to your bucket so as you can see our temperature is sitting nice and comfortable at about 85 almost 86 degrees centigrade or 186.3 degrees fahrenheit So the water needs to be just hot enough to melt the sugar and give a slight gelatinization to the uh, maize meal or the corn meal or the bright pot. We're going to give it a quick mix up to make sure everything is nice and dissolved. So that's 5 liters of water or just over 1 gallon of water into the bucket. Now what we're going to do is with the sugar and the fry pop all mixed up inside the bucket and all the sugar dissolved we are going to leave it like this for 20 minutes just to get everything nice and incorporated together and allow that hot water to pull as much of that corn flavor out of our fry pop. Now the only difference I have picked up thus far between this recipe and a UJ SSM is that the UJSSM gets added in cold. You don't add hot water into your corn, you just add cold water on top of it. So we'll see if that makes a difference. I personally have not yet made a UJSSM, but I have tasted some guys UJSSM first gens, and we'll see if this has a different flavor. Let's get the lid on, leave it for 20 minutes, and I'll see you guys in 20 minutes. With 20 minutes elapsed, it's time to open the bucket up and give it one last stir. Add hot and cold water up until we get to the point where we are ready to pitch our yeast and get the lid on. With the temperature now sitting comfortably at roughly 28 degrees C, what we're going to do now is just quickly do a hydrometer reading. Now with the amount of sugar that we added into here, 
we should be sitting comfortably on a 6% ABV or a 1.040. So we are now comfortably sitting on looks like a 1.045 giving us roughly 7% ABV. Maybe some of that corn interfered with the gravity reading here but we'll see when we are done at the end of the day if it ferments out down to zero. Our yeast is nice and active, time to dump it in. Now questions what I'm asking myself while I'm dumping the yeast is will this be able to be a generational recipe like a UJ SSM? I don't know, if you guys want me to make this a generational type of deal please put it down in the comments down below and uh, let me know if we should run this a couple of generations to see what the results are using only the back set and brand new Millipop every time we do a new generation. So yeah, if you're interested in that, pop it down in the comment section. Also, if you are interested in more content like this, please hit that subscribe button down in the corner. And if you like the content, give it a thumbs up. Now, thank you very much once again for sticking around to the end. Hope you have a fantastic 2021 and looking forward to seeing you next week. Have a lack of that.